Hi, Misha here, and now from the Eagle Moss Star Trek Universe Collection, we're starting to get a bit of a fleet of 32nd century Starfleet Federation style ships. When we just had the Crossfield class refit, the Discovery, it was kind of on its own. And then we picked up the new Intrepid design, the Voyager J. And then not long ago, the Eisenberg class, the USS Nog, came out. And then right after that, we got the Mars class, the USS the Yu Xin and yeah it just kind of came in it wasn't even a pre-order so yeah now that we've got a few to talk about let's you know compare and contrast and I'll give my two cents about what I do and don't like about each and just to be a little different, let's start with the newest. This is the Mars class, like I just said. The USS Liu Xin. And it has a lot in common with the other 32nd century vessels. It has detached nacelles, but these are of a very interesting shape. They're kind of hooked where they come under the saucer, where they almost want to make contact, but they don't. And then they stretch back and they slightly curve in. And then we have kind of a diamond-shaped saucer section. This is said to be a scout ship. It's even speculated that it could be one of the few new designs post burn. And uh, it's about 415 meters long if we're using their scale. And that's about all we know about it. <laughs> the other ship we see is the USS. Le Guin, named after Ursula Le Guin. By the way, the Liu, uh, Li, sorry, Liu here is named after another science fiction author of The Three Body Problem, a book I read many years ago now, actually. So it seems like the ships in this class are named after authors or science fiction writers, at any rate. And this interesting shaped hull actually does remind me of some other scout ships we've seen. For example, from the Next Generation movie, Insurrection. It's kind of like the little scout ship that Data flies. And we've seen other Federation shuttles and shuttly type small craft with uh, this kind of shape. Really interesting. The sorry, my thing got in the way there. The main body is metal, with the underside, the pylons, the well not pylons, the nacelles being the plastic part, and it's interesting. These kind of just plug in. There's a small notch and they are part of the stand. So if you remove the body you're just left with two nacelles on the stand. I have mixed feelings about that that we'll get to later on. But it does hold the nacelles very securely, and the main body 
just slides in there as normal. So, pretty neat. And let's revisit our Nog. We talked about this one not long ago. We know very little about the in-universe ship. It's about 1,200 meters, so it's one of the biggest ones. But a lot of that is our spike hanging out the back. Or I wouldn't say it's in a cell, maybe engineering hull. It's a very vertical ship. And as we kind of discussed in the comments of the video on it, it does kind of remind of the of the merchant man a bit. So I have to wonder if it's maybe a trade ship, a cargo ship, which would really make sense since it is named after a Ferengi. It's quite narrow but long. The main body's metal and are two detached nacelles or plastic. And they just seem to just kind of fit in little pockets on the stand. They just sit there on a shelf. They're not going to fall off, but they're probably the least secure of any of these, if I'm, uh, if I'm being honest. Moving right along, we have the Voyager J, the Intrepid class. This is a little bit bigger than the Mars, but not by much, about 453 meters. But it does seem to be a more substantial hull, as you know, more deck space. What's kind of interesting about this one is that it not only has detached nacelles, but also a detached star drive engineering hull. It's not detached by a whole lot, but it is. And it's connected to the saucer, which is the metal part, by clear pegs. And then, of course, the Nacelles have their own clear shelf that connects them here, separate from the stand. And it just slides on the bottom. And then we have kind of the cutout in the rear hull. I would say this is the most identifiable as a Starfleet ship. But... It's very much not a 23rd or 24th or 25th even century ship. And the lines, the saucer is pretty much all gone. It's, it's all turned into angles. No real rounded edges on this at all. But you can still make out the good old Voyager in its basic makeup. And we have kind of a recessed deflector area here very sleek yeah so what about the discovery a herself in universe this is the original 23rd century ship retrofit update over a number of weeks to 32nd century techniques and standards and in universe the reason given well it's it's a few one the spore drive makes it unique two zora the ai on board that is the ship in a way and three the sphere data although that's not really mentioned much once we get into season four of discovery they made a few changes. For one, they got rid of the original deflector going to more of a TMP looking recessed one. They also got rid of the little pylons between the cutouts of the saucer. And they made these little 
cutouts in the engineering hull. And it does have the attached nacelles, but they don't float as far away from the hull as we see on some of the other ships. And this was Eagle Moss's first attempt at a detached nacelle. And some don't care for the clips. I get that. But I will say this, they do hold very securely. And they prevented having to have holes or other things drilled in the vessel. But yeah, full disclosure, it is their first attempt. Yeah. Lay it down here. It is actually physically very big. It's very flat, of course. But yeah, it's a uh, pretty pretty darn good size. <laughs> That's always nice. So what are my thoughts? Doing this era of Starfleet ship was always going to be a challenge for Eagle Moss. And they seem to have taken it on. They've done these and they plan on doing, according to their schedule of upcoming models, pretty much all of them. I'm actually eager to see the 4 a cell version, also the 32nd century constitution. That'll be neat. I'm just a sucker for Federation designs, though. <laughs> you know, in-universe, they have the, the attached nacelles. They say it's for maneuverability, flexibility. Really what it is in the real world is just to give them a unique design aesthetic, and that's okay. That way you look at one on screen and immediately know that's a future ship, not a current one. That's, that's fine. It's a unique visual cue. It works. They also have programmable matter. That's another common standard thing. And a few other bits and bobs, like everyone having personal transporters. But we really don't see inside these other ships. In the show, of course, Discovery is the main one. It's a rapid response craft. Voyager J is brought up a bit. It almost seems like the flagship of the fleet, or at least the flagship of the task force. But we actually see a couple of different Mars-class scouts throughout the show. They seem to be very much an important long-range cargo freighter transport. And we do see the Nog, but well, probably less than the others, frankly, even though it's actually the biggest. So, what do I think of the ships themselves, the actual models? Well, honestly, quite interesting. Obviously, I had no idea what they look like, except for, you know, the basics of the Discovery, but not the refit. So, yeah, I was very intrigued when I first unboxed this one. And the next one I actually got was the Nog, much later. Followed very quickly by the Voyager J. And just a couple of days later by the Mars here. These all just kind of came in in one big womp. <laughs> so it's given me a little time to study them. What I will say, I understand why the floating... Detached nacelles are part of the stand on the Nog and the Mars. But I like this style better because you can actually pick them up and have a complete vessel in your hands. With these, if you take them off their stands, they're incomplete. And that does bug me a little bit. I'm not sure how they could have done it differently, but... 
I really like this style better where, yeah, maybe it's not as aesthetically appealing, but we know they're not floating right, so, yeah. I do like this style better. It will be interesting going forward to see which of the patterns Eagle Moss uses more. Right now, we've got two and two, so it's kind of hard to say. As far as the actual shapes and designs, I actually find the newest one here to be a very interesting look. And in a lot of ways, this might be the most future future ship I can think of. This actually seems like what I would imagine a future Federation ship. The Nog, I don't hate it, but it's a little odd, but it will probably grow on me. And the Discovery, well, it's still the Discovery. And the Voyager J, it's neat, but it is a little conservative. It's very conventional, at least compared to the other two here. So in terms of its future design, yeah, I've got to give it to the, the U over here, the Mars class. As far as the models themselves, though, Voyager J, I think everyone can imagine it's, you know, going to be most people's favorites. It's probably physically the largest. It's got a big metal hull. Good and durable, the way the nacelles clip on, very nicely done. I think this is going to be most people's favorite. I don't hate the Discovery A. I actually like it better than the original. But it's very clearly a different design from the rest of the fleet. And my biggest gripe with the Nog is how the nacelles don't really clip on. They just rest on the stand, so they can very easily be knocked off. And they're not metal, so they don't even have any weight to them. I think if they were a little heavier, it'd be better. Again, the Mars is the newest, and I'm really digging it, so second place probably goes to it. But I said when I kind of had enough of them here, I'd do a fleet overview. It is nice to see them thinking outside of the box, but they also don't come across as generic ships. They do seem human, Federation, Starfleet. So I like that. But at the same time, they don't just seem like the same thing over and over. They are unique and different. So, so far, I'm really enjoying it. And it'll be interesting to see how the next issues look, or even when they come out, because these cer certainly took long enough time to come out. But with that, that's what I think. I'd like to hear what, what you think. Which ones do you like or not like? Let me know in the comments. This is Misha. Catch you very soon. Next time.